It was 1,750 miles when we started. 24 hours. I think this is going to be my longest road trip ever. And now we're back in San Diego. Got the new boat. We knew we were a little early yet, you know, for the fishery to really be going off. This is typical for early season. There's so much bait in here. A little boil behind our bait. I can't tell if it's that sea lion or what, but this bait's super nervous. Maybe the best thing about rock cutting is the variety, and you just never know what you're going to pull up, and it's usually something cool. Bit? Feels like it. Yeah, that's what we're looking for right there on the meter rush. Bigger marks suspended off the bottom. A little bait on the bottom, the fish over top. Probably what they're beating up, yep. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you. What you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300-pound tunas. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one! He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. The time's finally come for Ali to make the transition from basically small sport fishing boat to a center console boat. Just kept talking about how great one of these fast, roomy boats would be over on the west coast. The only drawback with that is the boat was built in Florida. We have to get that boat to the West Coast somehow. Jesus, 24 hours. I think this is gonna be my longest road trip ever. We have to get our boat home from Louisiana so it can kind of you know, start its new life out here in San Diego. And in order to do that with a big center console, you put it on a trailer, you either pay somebody to ship it or you do it the way we do it. You hitch up and you do it yourself. Oh, Bucky, my man. Happy to see you. God. Feel a little better about our gas situation. How about you? Oh, God, that was close. That was a nail biter, dude. Let's get back on the road. You got it, buddy. I got you a little something to snack on here. What's the over under on how many gallons? I think 25.8. 20, I think 25.5 is the most I ever got out of a Chevy. So we got 10 hours? Yeah, roughly. 10 hours, two minutes. The first leg in our journey was, you know, a fairly easy one. You know, we were gonna be in Louisiana with some good friends. There you go. Damn, that's a good one there. <laughs> Woo, this one feels like it's a, it's a good one. Reef donkey. Nice work, Mo. It's a tuna, we got a tuna. I just got blown up by a tuna. Blackfin, big old fatty. Oh, he's there, he's there. Hey, Cappy, what you got there? Come on, be a nice yellow fin. Yeah! That's what we're after, dude. That's nice girl. Fish. Nice work. Nice work. That's a nice way to break in the new boat right there. Venice, Louisiana. Big yellow fin tuna. Good food. Comfortable bed at night. The next part of our journey, that, that wasn't going to be as easy. That was going to be hotel room, shuffling a lot of gear around. Our main concern on the road, obviously, is gas stops. You're towing a big 12,000 pound boat on the freeway, you're burning fuel up pretty quick. You got that bad, you turned the air off? Oh, yeah. We were gonna basically have to stop every three hours. And one thing you don't wanna do when you're trailering the boat cross country is run out of gas somewhere. Uh, wrong seat there, big boy. All you're right. up. You, you tired? I did my 15, now you can do yours. You were doing a good job. Uh, I know, I'm the best. I don't know if I'm gonna be able, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hang with that. I'm sure you can run us out of gas too. That's what I'm worried about. You know I'm gonna run us out of gas. Oh god. Yeah, that's the worst of its way behind us. We just passed Tucson, which puts us like kind of right below uh, Phoenix, and about five hours from the barn. Five more hours? Dude. I'm about as happy about it as you are. This is the longest trip ever. Welcome to California. 
That's the best sign I've seen all day. It was 1,750 miles when we started, and that's a pretty long road trip. A lot of different terrain, a lot of different people, a lot of different states. We got the boat there safe and sound, and we're able to fish it for the next few days. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evan Rood, Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Simrad, go with confidence, go with Simrad. Nomad Design, crafted by experience. And BDOutdoors.com. Now we're back in San Diego, got the new boat, feeling pretty good about it. We really didn't have any challenges at all, you know, trailering or with the engines or with the boat itself. Everything went surprisingly smooth. We knew we were a little early yet, you know, for the fishery to really be going off, but we had just trailered this boat all the way across the country. We had to shake this boat down still. We had to get used to it. Ali wanted to run it around, put some hours on it. Whenever you get a new boat, there's always a learning curve. You got to get used to it. You got to get used to the feel of everything on the boat, the ride, the steering, the way the boat runs in different kinds of chop. That's basically what Ali was doing. You know, he had a few days on the boat in Louisiana. Now he's in his backyard. He knows the waters. He is the captain. And I could tell as each day, as each hour went by, Ali was getting more comfortable with the boat and really becoming one with that boat. We're gonna run around the islands here. Hopefully we can find some bigger fish closer to the islands. And if this doesn't pan out, we're gonna go look in either in the flats between here and land, or we're gonna go south of the islands and look around a bit. Pretty much same program, running and gunning. Yep. So at the start of our season, the thing that I think of that really kicks the season off is our spring yellowtail fishing. Yeah, that's what we're looking for right there on the meter rush. Bigger marks suspended off the bottom. A little bait on the bottom, the fish over top. Probably what they're beating up, yep. This is typical for early season. There's so much bait in here. The fish just got here. They aren't super acclimated. A lot of times you'll play the frustration game. Those smaller baits will kind of aggregate in clouds. You know, they want to eat plankton and they're going to be where that plankton's at. And the currents will actually push them into big balls or clouds of bait, which makes it really easy for the game fish to eat them. Oh my gosh. Oh, Look big calico, that. huh? That's cool. Very cool. This is one of the bycatches that we get here when we're slow trolling. And I mean, it's a good bycatch. That's a big old grumpy calico bass. Real slow growing, so everybody lets them go. They say like a 12 inch fish is seven years old. That's unreal. It's incredible. Let's let this guy go. A foot in seven years. Off like a rocket. You know, one of the things that drives me nuts and prevents us from catching fish in the Keys is the silky sharks. I hate them. I'm not afraid to say it. I can't stand them, and they love me, and they love my baits. Yeah, Damn dog. it. Dog ate my fish. Either a bonita or a calico. Huh. Oh, there's not a shark back there. Oh, silky. <laughs> silky smooth. You know, our version of the silky shark in California is definitely the California sea lion. They're an awesome animal, they're very intelligent, and they're a nightmare when you're trying to fish around them. What's that big mark there, you think? Sea lion, probably. Uh, a little boil behind our bait. I can't tell if it's that sea lion or what, but this bait's super nervous. I got a follower. Dog chasing it? Yeah. They have all learned to sneak up behind a live bait, bite everything but the nose of it off, so all you get back is the hook, and they can make it impossible to fish at times and also make it impossible to land your fish. I saw a big. I think that's a dog. Is that what a dog is? Is that what a sea lion does? It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna fish hard for four days, you will definitely notice the extra cushion that Sea Deck provides in your knees, in your back, in your feet. So as soon as we got the boat home, the first thing we did, head down to see our friends at Blue Seas Fabrication on Mission Bay and have them scan the boat, which is the first step in preparation for putting new Sea Deck in. 
All right, James, so kind of give us a rundown of how you guys actually scan the boat. All right, so we've got right here a digital survey tool. Okay. There's a probe on there, and we're going to go around every feature, every latch, all the non-skid lines, the maximum extents of where the sea deck could go. Okay. And then what we're going to get off that is a digital file of your boat in okay. full 3D. Okay. We're going to import that into the computer back at the shop, redraw everything, clean up all the lines, neaten up all the radii, mm -hmm. add any patterns, logos, boat names, really whatever whatever you want. Okay. And, and we can pretty much tweak it any way we want, exactly. put logos anywhere, customize it any way we like. Exactly. Well, we'd like to do the whole deck. All right. We want to do top of the coffin box. I'd like to do a dash pad like Rush has. It's really handy. Okay. Keep stuff from sliding around. Definitely. And we'll do that out of, our, out of our thicker material. Okay. And then did you do the, you did your swim step, right? Yeah. I'm thinking I'd like yeah. to do that too. Yeah, no, I, I highly recommend it. And I would also do right there up in the tower. For sure. For sure. Yeah, okay. All right, let's get cracking. All right, let's do it. chasing those yellowtail everywhere. We were on top of them all day. We just could not get a bite. The sea lions were driving us nuts and wouldn't let us fish where we wanted to fish. And so finally it was time to switch gears. All right, Rush, so here's the program. We're gonna take off those short top shots we've been using, spin on about 30 feet, uh, this mono, and then we're just gonna do a, like a real basic, you know, Florida chicken rig, dropper loop, we call it. So just like everything else in our waters, these guys have been munching on those red crab. You guys got a real love-hate relationship with that crab, don't you? you? Totally. They bring in all this awesome fish, but they make it hard to catch all those awesome fish. Like a lot of fishermen, you go out with a plan, that plan's not always gonna work out for you. The plan B is rock cutting. Bit? Feels like it. Nothing huge, but. We'll have to make you guys some fish tacos with these, dude. Blow no. your mind, they're so good. You know I like tacos. I knew there wouldn't be much of a sales job in that. Damn! Is that a good one? Yeah, dude, oh my God. Yes, that, that is a good one, Florida guy. Maybe the best thing about rock cutting is the variety, and you just never know what you're gonna pull up, and it's usually something cool. That's an ugly fish. They're cool as hell, man. When they get big, they look like dragons. Call this a chucklehead. I believe I'm horrible with rock cod names, so some expert's gonna call me out. But another species, different variety, totally different coloring. That's a good red, man. That's a good chuckle, too. Chuckle my knuckle. Rock cod is basically a deep water fish. Resembles our scorpion fish, our rose fish, just like all the deep water fish. They have vibrant colors. Their eyes are giant, so they can see in that deep water where there's not a lot of light. And they're excellent table fare. Now, the bigger they are, the further back they're gonna float up, right? Usually, yeah. I must have a giant. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, dude, it's a big old red. That's a good red. Like, people got nuts for one that size. That's the same one you caught, right? Yep. Earlier yep. in the day? Red vermilion rockfish. Now, that one looks more orange. Yeah, this is called a honeycomb rockfish. And this is as big as they get. Really? That might be the biggest honeycomb I've ever caught. Southern cow, one rockfish at a time. <laughs> One of the most common themes on our shoots amongst the crew is pretty sad, but it's honestly tacos. We all love to eat tacos. I bring these guys out to California. That's all they talk about. They won't shut up. We feed them tacos all week until they swear they can't eat another one. And then two days later, they want to go get some more. How many tacos do we eat on an average shoot? More than most people should. That's probably right. So we usually try to focus our skills on carne asada tacos, maybe some al pastor, maybe throw in some pollo. Well, that's because we can't catch enough fish to make tacos. But today, Today we pile. actually did, because these beautiful rock cod lost their life, these are those Southern California rock cod, the red vermilions, take a piece of good white meat fish, then you're gonna put it in a beer batter. Now this is a beer batter somebody online showed me recently. It's a beer batter that uses active yeast. And what that does is it just puffs up that beer batter on the, on the fish, gives it a good crunch. And like, it's all about the crunch and the texture with these things. And then once you do that, you gotta throw it in a corn tortilla, which we got here because only savages eat flour tortillas with their tacos. I mean, I think I we've discussed this. 
So basically the program is, we're gonna batter the fish, we're gonna fry it real quick, we're gonna throw it in a tortilla, all these awesome toppings, dude, good to go. Squeeze a lime, and then if you want a little bit of extra fire, which I know you like it spicy, you know your favorite Mexican salsa or hot sauce? That's why I come to Southern Cal. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the fishing. A little bit of fishing, a lot of lot tacos. Of tacos. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Andro's Boatworks. Adventure never ends. Mustad Hooks. Defining fishing hooks since 1877. Aftco, the American fishing tackle company. Costa, see what's out there. Seakeeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Fleer, the world's sixth sense. And by Casa Vieja Lodge. Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. All right, Rush, we're gonna do it again, dude. Saw a lot of fish, they did not want to cooperate. We gotta get these yellowtail caught. Let's get out there and get after it. Feels a little warmer here, it's a but new I mean, day. does that mean anything down there? Dude, I don't know, man. I mean, you know the drill, when you see fish like that and they don't want to cooperate, it just takes something to flip the switch and hopefully, you know, today's the day. I'm out of answers at this point. Just go fish hard and make it happen. One thing a fisherman always has to keep in mind is tomorrow's a new day. And we started to find those things that we're looking for, packs of terns. You know, you might see a big pile of birds, shearwaters and pelicans. The terns are always like first on the scene, so that's what I'm looking for. By the time the pelicans get there, it's usually over. over, yeah. And if they take off in a certain direction, I'm looking in that direction and I'm probably gonna follow them. So Rush, I threw on the radar in bird mode. See the blue marks? Yeah. Look up ahead. One of the things you need to be able to do when you're running and gunning is be able to get to the birds, be able to get to the fish really fast. That's the huge benefit to having an open fish boat with a lot of speed and a lot of power to get up and get to those birds. There's a big bunch of birds on this edge. Hopefully it's not mackerel, it's the okay. right stuff. I'm on. I'm on. Little guy. No, Benita. We're pulling some drag here. No, they're fighters, man. They're not big, but they definitely will fight. A little bigger one, actually. Yeah, that yeah, is about a little the same better size. one. Oh, look at this guy. Straight keys action. What do you think that was? Shark. I mean, Shark? I'm gonna guess. Really? Oh yeah, I bit the tail right off. Matt took his know, motor. Not the telltale of a mako. They love to take the tails off. That's what they do to swordfish. You know, those swordfish are sleeping on the surface. They come up from underneath them and bite their motor off. Let this guy go. It's up to you. I'm gonna keep this guy because he's chomped up and we're gonna make a plate of sashimi tonight. So, very cool. Well, it's good though, when they're on that little bait like that, it's hard to switch them over to a lure usually. Bite? Yep. Sweet. These are a little bigger than the last ones we were catching. Um, that's that's probably that about, yeah, that's probably an average fish right there. Yeah, he liked that nomad. I had one on too, but I pulled him off. Take him. Oh, back to the house. These fish are cooperating today. It looks like they're gonna be up, so we should probably get that guy on ice. Okay. If we wanna take him home, and let's get back at it, because sometimes you only get an hour like this in the morning, and then it's over. Look at the size of that, it's cool. That's all yellows? All yellows. See how they're rolling and not yeah. splashing? I bet. There, sweet. Nice work, buddy. Woo. Talk about persistence. Dude, we earned that bite. What do you think? Was it worth the wait? All that running and gunning, you like it in this style boat over here or what? No, the boat is the ticket for sure. All the speed, the power. The torque, just to be able to jump on it, jump on it and change directions. And then that tower, I can see pretty good from up there. That's about as high as my other boat, you know? Oh, I still love it. I mean, it's some of my favorite fish in that running and gunning. You know what these are really good for is from fresh pokey. Really? Oh, you know yeah. I love pokey. No, it's really good. We'll make this guy into some. Migrating up, our, up and down our coast right now from Baja. These guys it's really, fat. you can see what we're, we're seeing here on any stretch of beach from here halfway down Baja right now. 
There he is, been chasing them all day. That's your school size, we call those fun size. You get into those other ones, those 25s and 30s, I mean, they'll put the hurt to you. Especially on that spin gear. What's this one, about 10 pounds? 10 pounds, yeah, right in there, 12 pounds, something like that. So it's Memorial Day weekend here in San Diego. I have the most understanding and awesome wife on the planet. I'm always traveling, always working, but there's one thing that I have to be home for every year, and that's the LSU Alumni Association Crawfish Boil. They actually put on the largest crawfish boil in the world here in San Diego. Seems ironic, we just left Louisiana to come to San Diego for a crawfish boil, but this is a one-of-a-kind party. It's all for a good cause, and it's something we've been going to for the last 12 or 13 years. Great way to unwind after a really long road trip. That boat got thrown into the mix really quick. We got it across the country. I'm looking forward to a great season in it. You know, California has a lot of great fisheries to offer, and that boat's perfect for all of them.